Stewart's was a department store. They had a restaurant in the basement. We would go to the restaurant and close it down. We had enough bodies to place at every door entrance into the restaurant. Look a lot last year, and I had my eye on the best Easter outfit ever. Ooh, with school heel shoes and a hat with a ribbon that matches the dress. And I like some long lace up gloves to match too. And I showed it to my mama, and my mama said that when my daddy got his long stretch, she was gonna go right downtown and buy the whole outfit for me. Ooh, I got all excited because I love to dress up. And then. Walter got in trouble. See, him and some of his friends got arrested down at the Blue Boy Cafeteria for disturbing the peace. They was trying to sit at the counter and order some lime jello salad. Now, anybody that knows Walter knows he won't eat any food that's green. So for the life of me, I don't understand why he would go and break the law over something he won't even eat. Wall Street got put on probation, but Mama and Daddy weren't even mad at him. I usually stay mad at Walt because he's always getting into trouble, and I'm always having to pay for his mistakes. He goes and gets arrested. I can't get nothing new for Easter. Walter said that him and some of his friends belong to this organization called CORE. It stands for Congress of Racial Equality. They had started off by protesting the Walgreens on 4th and Chestnut. They didn't have that many people with them, so they didn't cause that much of a commotion. And, and I want to know, why was they protesting the Walgreens? And Walter said it's because they don't allow Negroes to come and sit down and eat at the counter, just like the Blue Boar. What are some of the things that Common did that you really liked? Uh, mm -hmm. I like how she was uh, the boss and um, herself, like she like switched spots sort of. Uh-huh. Kind of and did she do anything with her voice or body to help us know that she was playing Mr. Hefe, her boss? Yeah. yeah. What, what, did she, what did you see well, her do, Garrett? She sort of straightened her back arm mm -hmm. and she talked with a deeper voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And she kind of had her hands sort of in front of her like this as yeah. opposed to uh, that. And, and, and Carmen is playing, uh, playing tricks with words because what is the name of her boss? What did she say the name was? Mr. Hefe. Mr. Hefe. Hefe. And does anybody recognize that word? Hefe. Boss. Hefe. Hefe. Hefe is Spanish for? Mr. Well, boss. Boss. So his name was Mr. Boss. <laughs> so Carmen was having fun with yeah, language, I and I always like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the setup there was that Jacqueline, her daughter, had asked, "What if, you know, why don't I see you all day?" And so she was telling her that she has to work, and she gave her an example of the kind of work that she did and the fact that she worked later than usual. Mm -hmm. And I also liked the setup you did at the beginning. You had added it since I had, since oh, I had yeah. seen the monologue that it was everybody gathering around for supper. I thought that was a really nice touch. Okay. Boot camp experience like hard. Now, now, when you do this, when you're interviewing people, what you want to do is try to get as much information out of them as you can because that's how you're building your history, you know. So if they just say hard, you know, it's like, can you explain? Can you give specifics? And that way they say, well, we woke up at eight. You know, this is what we ate. This is how we slept. The real fault of judgment, in our opinion, lies with Mr. and Mrs. Carl Brady. And to me, to have turned them away would have been a sin. This white couple bought the Shively house in their own name, with no intention of living in it, but for the sole purpose of getting it into the hands of Negro owners who could have not bought it directly. You remember in the Bible where Christ said, Whatever may have been the motives of the Bradys, I was hungry and he fed me all. Legally, they gave poor service to idealism. I was naked and he clothed me. Forcing an issue of race so relations and this artificially contrived way. Some of the white citizens of the Shively neighborhood have convicted themselves of having no respect for the law. We did not expect too much trouble out of it. We thought there might be protests from some of the neighbors. They are entirely within their rights, we believe, in protesting the purchase of property in their subdivision by Negroes. 
But that soon they would accept it. Regardless of the moral issue, there is no use denying that the value of their property will decrease as a result of the sale. And everything will be all right. The right of orderly protest, however, is not the right to throw rocks through windows or to fire bullets into rooms where human beings are sleeping. Anyway, there was trouble. Hoodlums shot into the house and finally set dynamite under it and blew the side of it up. These are acts in the spirit of lynch law. The family and some friends were outside the house at the time. Sunday, June 27th, 1954, 12.30 a.m. And by the grace of God, we're not hurt. All of this was some time ago. <laughs> Naturally, a lot of people have been mad at us about the thing. And although we have a great deal of support, too. From the Louisville Defender, July 1st, 1954. But a long time went by, and the police arrested no one for blowing up the house, despite the fact that we had learned on excellent authority that they had a confession from the man who set the dynamite a week after the bomb. Louisville must now raise its head out of the mire and proceed forthwith to preserve the lives, liberty, and property of the Wades. <laughs> There's a great deal of pressure on the authorities to catch the people who did it. So finally, the Commonwealth's attorney, A. Scott Hamilton, agreed to conduct a grand jury investigation of the thing. The 15th day of September, 1954. In the most <coughs> amazing spectacle you ever saw, the Commonwealth's attorney, who is violently anti-Negro, turns the investigation into a witch hunt and attack on the Negro owners of the house and their friends. Now, Mrs. Brady, there are two ideas about this explosion. Now, some people think the white neighbors or the residents out there in particular may have set the explosion in order to scare the Wades out of the neighborhood. They called us before the grand jury. On the other hand, others seem to think the Wades did it themselves, or their friends did it, to more or less focus attention on the affair and to stir up trouble and that sort of thing. And instead of asking us what we know about the bombing, began to pry into our personal beliefs and reading habits. And actually, I might go this far and say that there are rumors that this was communistic inspired. We, of course, refuse to answer all such questions. You ever been a member of the Progressive Party? On the ground Civil rights that they Congress, are complete. They were constantly rights. You ever belong to the of American writers? Have you, ever, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> And yet, it is a tactic as old as time. Victory for the Viet Minh. The French are leaving Vietnamese soil. At last we shall reunite Vietnam. Not so fast. The United States is coming with 11,000 troops in 1963. Communism will not overtake Southeast Asia. We will not let it. 1963, the smell of gasoline and the burning flesh of Buddhist monks shocks the world. Focus your attention on Vietnam. The world is changing. Shots ring out. President Diem has been shot and killed. 